Hey, Hillsiders, happy Friday. This is Louie. This is the 20th of March. I know I needed to let you know that because I'm wearing a black shirt. If you look through all the videos I've done so far, I'm wearing black shirts. And uh, I guess I own a lot of black. I hadn't really thought of that before. Anyway, as we go through this time, I almost don't even know what to call it. We can look at it in all the areas of things that are negative to think about it. We can also think of the things that are positive or opportunities for growth about it. And this, especially the isolation and the needing to, I hate the word social distancing or physical proximity distancing from, from uh, large groups of people. Uh, this gives us an opportunity to intentionally invest in our own spiritual development. And sometimes we throw around the word devotions. And a devotion doesn't have to look a certain way. It really, it's time that you set apart to spend with Jesus. And ideally, just the same way you would eat food every single day, you're going to set aside some time to spend with Jesus. And that can be with, you know, reading your Bible or even going online and having an app read it to you. I especially like, there's a guy named Brian Harden, H-A-R-D-I-N. Just love to listen to him read the scriptures. And then, you know, if you are more into the British accent, you've got the people who will read it to you in a British accent. And But the important part is you're getting the Bible into you, in your heart, in your mind, and it does transforming work inside of us. Uh, there's also time with devotions for prayer. And when we think of prayer, we can think of, okay, this is when I say, dear Jesus, and I give him my laundry list. But a lot of time, prayer can be something even more than that, where we sit and we express our needs, but we also can sit in silence and then set us set apart time just to listen and see what is it that God will want to talk to me about. If you're like me, it can be a challenge to think, okay, what do I pray? I feel like I prayed and I, I ran out of stuff to say. Anybody besides me ever had that happen to? Oh, good. I'm thank you for that one hand. I appreciate that. You and me, we've had that. Now, it's uh, I started praying through the Psalms, and so using the Psalms as a starter point for the prayer. And one of the reasons why praying in the Psalms is such a praying through the Psalms can be so helpful is because when David is writing the Psalms, there is no Christianizing of the words that he's saying. He uses all of his emotions. He questions God. There's times he's yelling about stuff, but he comes back to. Here's who God is. Here's what he says. Here's what I believe to be true. And so he's not living in denial about the circumstances of his life. I mean, his father-in-law tried to kill him for seven years, chased him around with an army. I've not experienced that. No matter what other stuff's going on, I've not experienced that. And so David and the Psalms that he wrote are a great help to us to be able to uh, kickstart our own prayer and quiet time. And then when it comes to worship, even if you can't play or you can't sing, you can listen to it and maybe sing along because we're supposed to make a joyful noise to the Lord, and that's that's a good thing to do. Um, I would encourage you, use technology, FaceTime, Skype, WhatsApp, uh, to meet with friends for Bible study because a lot of times it can be hard to set aside the time just by ourselves, but if we make an appointment with a buddy, a friend, a family member, hey, we're going to get together. Even if it's virtually, it may not be perfect, but it gives us time to be able to share and exchange our thoughts and feelings and prayer for each other, things like that. This may even be a time that we try to strategically invite a friend or two over, or we go over to a friend's house. And uh, I think we're really going to be treasuring the the actual physical, personal, in-your-space contact that we have really come so used to in our, our everyday lives. And now when it's not there, we're recognizing, yeah, man, this, this is tough. Um, community means we need each other. We are together in something. And one of the things that we do to celebrate commun community every week at Hillside is we receive the Lord's Supper. We receive communion. And at Hillside on Sunday mornings, it kind of looks like this. We've got the bread, and we've got this little tiny authorized by Jesus plastic cup with grape juice in it. And this coming Sunday, while we're getting ready to receive communion together, I am not going to be able to give you a plastic cup with juice in it or a little very cool half cracker that has probably no gluten in it. I'm not going to be able to give that to you. So as you prepare for this coming Sunday, it may be that part of your devotion, you, what you can do is to start adding in receiving communion at home by yourself or with your family. And the verses that kind of reference this go is when uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul the Apostle writes to the church at Corinth and he says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So something significant happens. We're, whenever we're taking the bread and the cup, we're declaring Jesus' death until he returns. And what are some of the things that go along with Jesus' death? Number one, we get to be reminded that we are receiving grace from God. We are getting to experience the gift of Christ and his love. The reminder that Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. We get to experience strength in times where we're feeling overwhelmed and fearful and worried. We get to experience forgiveness and a reminder of the fact that Jesus paid it all. This cup and the, the representation juice inside of it says Jesus paid for every sin, every sickness, everything we could ever begin to experience. He paid for that. We also get to experience hope. Anybody need some hope? Hope in the face of fear and despair. Jesus gives that, and this communion is a reminder of that. We get to experience light in the middle of the darkness. We get to experience trust, reminding ourselves no matter what's going on in the rest of the world, we've entrusted ourselves and our life to Christ. And finally, this is a reminder of our unity. I miss you guys. I miss being able to be together. I can tell you this, every time I'm going to use this cup and this bread and I take this, I'm going to be celebrating the fact that we're united together in Christ and that there's going to come a time when we're coming out the other side of this where we get to see each other. We can celebrate that. But in the meantime, we are the church on Monday morning. We are the people who gets to put our hope and faith and trust in Christ at a time when many people don't have anything to put their trust in. May God bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you in this time. One of the funny things is sometimes people can think that if you don't have this authorized bread and this authorized uh, plastic cup with juice in it, that you can't take it. You can't receive communion. And I want to tell you something. From my opinion, the best thing to do is to, if you can find some bread, make some bread, uh, purchase some bread. If you can find some, get some bread and get a little piece of that. And ideally for the cup, you could use, um, this will work. Uh... If you have these little plastic cups around, use one of those. But you have a cup, you have some bread, and in the cup, well, do you have any grape juice? Well, some people drink grape juice, some people don't. Um, you can use wine. That's fine, too. What happens if you don't have grape juice or wine? Does that mean you can't receive communion? Absolutely not. I believe that it's not so much important what it is that we're drinking, but that we are dedicating the time and the effort and the focus to Jesus Christ and saying this is his, this represents his body, this represents his blood. So if it's water, grape Kool-Aid, I don't know, but find a way to incorporate this, this grace of God into your daily life as much as possible and be prepared when we're coming together on Sunday to celebrate communion that we're going to receive this and know that God is going to continue the great work that he has started in us and through us and around us. Looking forward to seeing you all in person very soon. We will be streaming on Sunday starting at 1030. If you have questions, comments, observations you want to weigh in on, please do so using the tech that's available to us. God bless you. Have a great rest of your Friday. The body, the blood. Be well.